Good morning, Tree of Life. Uh, we're, it's going to be a difficult time for us. It has been the last week, and uh, we're making some adjustments here with uh, Garrett's good uh, technical abilities. Uh, we've set up a little uh, studio down in my basement, and we'll be able to uh, make some videos, and hopefully we'll be able to worship together. We're going to try it today, see how it goes, and uh, with God's good grace, even this will come out all right. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll begin with our confession. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is present, who gives life, who calls into existence things that do not exist. Amen. If you were to keep watch over your sins, O Lord, who could stand? Yet there is forgiveness with you that you mayest be feared. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess our sin and have turned away from you, knowingly and unknowingly. We have wandered from your resurrection life and have strayed from your love for all people. Turn us back to you, O God, and give us new hearts and right spirits that we may find what is pleasing to you and dwell in your house forever. Amen. Receive the good news. God turns to you in love. I will put my spirit in you, and you shall live, says our God. All your sin is forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, who is free and the unbounding gift of God's grace for you. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious God. Amen. The prayer of the day. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As you know, this is the fourth Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Lent, March 22nd, and we've been trying to work with a series on uh, repentance during Lent. I've been using the key, the suffix R-E, and talking about different uh, concepts and words that begin with R-E. R-E means again, and so over the last couple of weeks, uh, we've been thinking about that. Today, I would like to uh, start first with what we missed last week. A short little lesson, I hope, on what uh, will be, will be uh, given to us in the prayer from last week. It was Romans 15, Romans 5, 1 to 11. The reading is, therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have ob obtained access to this grace by which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, endurance pr produces character, character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ for, died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for the righteous person, though perhaps for a good person someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, we now have been justified by his blood and we will be saved through him from the wrath of God. 
For if we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, his son. Much more surely, having been reconciled, we'll be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in our God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received our reconciliation. So to go back just a moment, I know I should be talking about the coronavirus and our concerns for our families, our loved ones, our nation, and the world, and uh, we will have prayers after the sermon for that. Uh, but right now, I think we should continue to do scripture reading, stay in our lessons, and stay for the, the time of Lent in order to give ourselves a feeling that life goes on and life is going to be good once again, and our patterns of life especially in the church, will once again be, be reestablished and will become again a family of God soon, back home at Tree of Life. So I'm going to do a short sermon off of that lesson and also the last one I'll be reading for this Sunday, come, uh, this Sunday coming tomorrow, which is uh, from the Gospel. But You'll remember, or I hope you'll remember, that we had started with uh, a lesson about remember was the first Sunday of Lent. Remember, our e member, member coming from mene, which means remember. So remember means re remember or remember once again. So what I did in that sermon was to remind us that if we think back into the scripture, into the past, God's creative beginning, that what we have is God's creation started with all of life, the universe itself, light and darkness. And that we have to remember that we were the last part of that creation. Actually, this is interesting because science has showed us that uh, we are kind of the last creation even now, being the order that we are. But there was so much more that came before us we have to remember that God had created that order and that life and that, that world so that, as it says in Scripture, Adam and Eve might be fed, that without this creation, there would be no life. So we have to remember and repent that we can't think of ourselves as subduing the earth or dominating the earth, but we're all part of it. And this creation of ours that God has given is ours to till and to care for. So caring for creation was one of our underlying themes. To remember, we're not the dominant species, we're the caring species, the tillers of the soil and the land and the earth. We seem to remember that, forget that. The second Sunday of Lent, we talked about rebirth, to be born again. And Nicodemus came and asked us, asked, uh, Jesus, how can I be reborn again? And Jesus said, you're going to be reborn from the Spirit. And I look back upon the creation that we have, and I realize that rebirth is everywhere. It's part of the reality of the creation God has given us, that rebirth happens over and over and over and over again. Plants, animals, even the earth itself has been reborn more than once. It wasn't just the dinosaurs that were uh, destroyed and extinct, but many other times it's happened before. And God has recreated and rebirthed whole ecosystems. Beginning with the very smallest part of life, it's grown up and over again. As generations die, new generations are born. It's a part of life. And we too, God has promised in Jesus Christ, as he died and rose again, so shall we. We are reborn children of God. And so I come to the third Sunday of Lent and say the word I wanted to use was reconciliation. Reconcile. Reconcile comes from the word reconcilium, which is, as you all know, is Latin. And it means uh, to bring together, like a council. That's where the word council comes from, is a bringing together. And reconcile means to overcome distrust and hostility. And one of the 
definitions I found that was very interesting to me. Choose to coexist in harmony. That when we reconcile with each other, we live in harmony. Now the lesson calls on us to be reconciled with our creator, God. That we are the creatures, God is the creator. He creates all things and gives it to us to till and to care for. And that we need to be reconciled with creation as well as with God. We should respect God's creation, that we are a part of it. We are a part of it. We don't dominate. We don't subdue. We live in it. And without creation all around us, without being reconciled to creation, we can't live and coexist in harmony. We're finding that out right now with the coronavirus. So this week, as we come again to another Sunday, fourth Sunday of Lent, I found another uh, lesson. Now this is a long lesson, but it's one you know, and it's always fun to read this lesson. This goes on for 42 verses. And, uh, you know, I wish uh, that... Uh, <laughs> One of you could stand up and do this today for me. But listen to this. This is from Jesus coming to the Samaritan city called Sychar. He came near the plot of the ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. The Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman, the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. And Jesus asked her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink the water that I give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give you will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to come, come, be coming here again to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands. And the one you now have is, is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming, and, and now is, when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, and is now here when all the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit. Those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he the one who is speaking to you. Just then that his disciples came and they were astonished that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said to him, what do you want or why are you speaking with her? When the woman left her water jar and went back to the city, she said to the people, come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah, can he? They left the city and were on their way to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. 
So surely the disciples said to one another, No one has brought him something to eat. Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me to complete this work. Do not say four months more, then comes the harvest, but I tell you, look around and see the fields are ripe for harvesting. The reaper is ready to receive the wages that is gathered, the fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the bird holds the true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with him, and they stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe. We have heard for ourselves, and we know this, this is truly the Savior of the world. This lesson was from actually the third, the third Sunday of, of Lent. And again, we see where Jesus is opening the eyes of the people around him and giving them an opportunity to re-see again, to re-see that life is a gift and that life is something that we all have. That life, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Something else was said in the scripture, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The light of the world that has come to open up the eyes of those who are blind. So the last lesson for today, if I can find it. Now this, as you probably all know now, is the gospel that I should have read. But you didn't hear last year, last week's gospel, so I'm glad you heard that too. <laughs> last week, the woman had herself eyes opened. And she knew what, because of what Jesus said and what he did, that he was the Messiah, the one to come into the world. And she became his proclamation, his ambassador, his disciple, and brought her whole community into the circle of Jesus Christ. As Jesus heads toward Jerusalem and toward his end upon the cross, travels among many people, and in many places, he does a miracles that show his power and his abilities. One of the most important of those miracles is Jesus healing the blind man. And this is the gospel for today. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he is born blind? Jesus answered, neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind because God's work might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming and no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. And when he said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. He went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had been seen before him, as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No. But it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how are your eyes open? He answered, The man called Jesus, made mud, spread it on my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? They said, I don't know. They brought, they brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind, now it was the Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. The Pharisees began to ask him how he received his sight. And he said to them, He put mud on my eyes, and then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. 
But others said, then how can this man who is a sinner perform such signs? They were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes that he opened. The man said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he see? His parents answered, We know that it is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that he now sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, He is of age, ask him. For the second time, they called the man who had been born blind, and they said to him, Give glory to God. We know this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, although I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he do to you, and how did he open your eyes? And he answered, I have told you already and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, and we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he listens to the one who worships and obeys him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If the next man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him. You were born entirely in sins. And are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out. And when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, Who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one speaking to you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And they worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, if you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say we see, your sins remain. The Gospel of the Lord. So we see in those two huge Gospels, two stories of people who begin to see who Jesus truly is. The light has turned on. And the word I'm going to be using today is to relight. But right now we need to hear from JP. Hey, JP here. Hello. Hi, Tree of Life. I see you out there. I'm here in Hopecast in the Pastor Johnson down in his basement. Ha! <laughs> I gotta tell you, we're having a time. And the whole world's having a time. But we're gonna stick together and get through it. It's gonna get better, kids. We're gonna get back to school. We got good doctors and good, all, good people that are gonna help us. Good hospitals. But we're gonna take care of each other and take care of brothers and sisters and grandmothers and everybody. Hey, I got one for you to lighten things up a little bit. All right, uh, tell me, what kind of dog can tell time? Dog can tell time. A watchdog. A watchdog. It's not as good as when we're at Tree of Life. JP, 
JP, where are you, JP? Oh, wait, I hear some. JP, JP, where are you, JP? I can't find my J. Hey, wait, wait, somebody, somebody come up here. JP, it sounds like Cooper. JP, JP, I can't, oh, oh, I, I can't find my, I can't, I can't, find, what, I can't see a thing, JP, what, what's happening, I can't see a thing. Well, hey, Cooper, you gotta, oh, JP, I'm so scared, I can't see a thing. Well, Cooper, hold on a minute, let me take care of you here, boy. Oh, golly, you silly dog. Oh, 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 yeah, you silly dog, you left your blinders on from last night. Well, I went to bed and I wanted to sleep good and I, I forgot I had them on. I woke up in the morning, I couldn't see. Well, yeah, I had your blinders on. I sure did. But I tell you, it did give you an idea about the lesson today. We just led the lesson about the blind man, how he couldn't see. You know, I can really appreciate, I can't imagine a whole life not being able to see. Yes, and Jesus opened his eyes and he gave him a sight and he was so happy and he just told everybody about how one he was born blind but now he sees and wow i'll tell you i can't imagine what that's like living all that time in darkness but we know jesus gave him sight again and was given he is the light of the world jesus our lord oh wow jesus is wonderful yes he is Hey, now that you got your eyeballs back, how about singing a song with me for the kids? Okay, we can do that. Jesus loves the little children. Oh, the children of the world are red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in your sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. One more time. Jesus loves the little children. Oh, the children of the world are red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. You know, Jesus is going to stay with us, kids. You don't worry. You keep praying for a wonderful day tomorrow and each day. Take care of your brothers and your sisters, your moms and your dads, and your grandparents and your neighbors as best you can. And make sure you do what you can to make the house peaceful, too. It's hard to live and not be able to go out too much. But we're doing the best we can, and we'll get back to school and to church as soon as possible. I'm looking forward to it. Well, gotta go, gotta go. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Well, bye-bye, kids. See you later. Bye-bye. We're back. Thank you, JP. Thank you for all that wonderful lesson and that good singing. Uh, at least we got some music here in church today. Well, when I looked at these lessons this Sunday, I reminded that on Friday we have a Bible study. And this Bible study is a men's Bible study. And the men's Bible study couldn't go to a church. It had been gathering for 35 years, right, in Hokesson at Grace Lutheran Church. And we couldn't come together because all the churches were closed and isolated from each other. So the men decided that they'd try to do something. And six of the 12, there are 12 men in the, the, the uh, Bible study, Seems like it's always 12 through those 35 years. It's always been about 12. Jesus made the number, and that's who got together. So we went out to the farm. The man had a farm. He said, come out, we can stay in the barn. I said, well, that sounds good, stay in the barn. And when we got out there in the morning, we found out that, no, the barn's too cold. He had put a fire in his fire ring, and we got out there at 6.30 in the morning, and it was foggy on Friday. And it was so dark. It was so very dark that we huddled around that fire, six feet apart, of course. We all brought our own chairs and put them six feet apart. And then we sat and we talked for over an hour, over an hour about life and about things that are happening. And uh, we couldn't do the kind of uh, reading in our Bibles we usually do because it was too dark. We did have good prayer. But you know, in the darkness, uh, as the sun came up in the morning, by the time we left, uh, the sun was up and the fog was burning away. But as the night came, re retreated from the sun just in the first morning light, we saw 
nature come alive once more. First, it was a big blue heron flew across the top uh, over the over the fire. Uh, blue herons are one of my favorite birds uh, because uh, uh, they're always there when I'm fishing. If I want to find out where the fish are, I go follow a blue heron. Many times they come in and stand not too far away because if I catch a little fish and throw them in, they'll grab it before it hits the water. So herons are very special to me. And then came a pair of Canadian geese, a male and a female, flying across, squawking away. A few minutes later, the, as the light got just to a certain point, you could just feel the whole of the forest come alive with birds and chirping and every, uh, calling to each other and making all kinds of noise. And uh, it was just marvelous to see life come. As, as the light came, light, light came, life came back to the forest. And we all enjoyed that. Uh, light is the basic element of creation says in our scripture that uh, Jesus, from the, uh, God from the darkness, made the light, divided the light from the darkness. And that was the first creative piece. And, and it's always been a power in creation, and even in our lives. And so when Jesus in scripture is called the light of the world, it means something very special that he's part of that creative, life-giving power in life. The man who was born blind had never seen the light. He had many other faculties and he knew what was around him, but he'd never seen the light. When his eyes were opened, he was so filled with wonder that he told everyone that Jesus had opened his eyes and everyone noticed that the man who'd been born blind for all those years since the day he was born had never seen the light, now he was seeing once more. The light was filling his soul. He became a disciple of Jesus. They couldn't, couldn't stand it. The, the leaders of the Jews just couldn't stand it that he had done that on a Sabbath day, but the man just knew that God was in his presence. Now I see. Imagine yourself and never seen light and then would see it. You'd be able to look all the way down the street or across the universe. Gather the lights of the universe in your eyes every night in the springtime. In a clear sky with the moon and the stars and the sun up above. To have that distance and that beauty and the colors. He was born again. He was born into the light. So our lessons are about relighting, relighting. When God relights our life, as we repent over and over again, we also get relit. God's life is filled with light. God's light is Jesus Christ. The way, the truth, and the life brings the light to our souls. On Easter Sunday, the women came to the grave. Jesus had died on Friday. The light had gone out of the world. He was buried in the cold ground and stone was rolled across the grave. In the darkness he lay. But on Easter Sunday when they came, not expecting to see him again, the women came. The stone was rolled back and suddenly in the morning light a vision of angels and the word once again, Christ is alive. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He's not here. And then they met Jesus. Mary, Mary. Jesus was alive. And so shall we. So Jesus is our light. And we relight each other's soul. And we remember that we're only a part of this great creation. And we're a part of it to be tillers of the soil, be tillers of the world to bring everything we need to our neighbors and our friends and our loved ones during this difficult time we're having. Let's, in prayer, bring light to each other. Let's remember those who are working every day and every moment, 24 hours a day, to help people struggle through these difficult times as we recognize each other and see each other in the light of God. We'll get through this and we'll come back to church by God's grace real soon. Amen.
Let's confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, who suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, who descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer, turning our hearts to God who is gracious and merciful. We pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of life, bind your faithful people into one body, enliven the church with your spirit, and bless the work of those who work for its renewal. Accomplish your work of salvation in us and through us for the sake of the world. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of life, you love the world that you have made. You grieve when creation suffers due to natural causes or many things that we do. Restore the polluted lands and the waterways. Heal the areas of the world ravaged by human activity or by storms and floods wildfires and droughts, other naturals and unnatural disasters. Bring all things to new life. Help us, dear Lord, to bring that new life. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of life, you show redemption to all who watch and wait with eager expectation. Those longing for wars to cease, waiting for immigration paperwork to finalize, those seeking election, and those in dire need of humanitarian relief, especially, dear Lord, people and loved ones and families who are stricken by this disease that is among us now, that we will overcome by your grace. Be with those who have lost loved ones already, and help us again to realize that we are in this one world, this one planet, and there is no planet B. We must take care of this world. Come quickly with your hope. Hear us, O God. God of life, you weep for those who grieve. Unbind all who are held captive by anxiety, despair, or pain. Fill us with compassion and empathy for those who struggle keep us faithful in prayer. We pray especially for Amy and Bill, Camille and Chris, Dave, Danielle, Danny and Elizabeth, Eric and Erica, Fred and Grace, Linda and Margaret, Melanie and family, Mercedes and Patrick, Richard and Rick, Ryan and Sarah and Susie, Tina, and those we name with our lips and in our hearts. We pray especially, dear Lord, for the families and people and nations, communities stricken by this coronavirus that is among us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Give us the discernment. Give us vision to see more clearly what you have in mind for Tree of Life for each one of us in our daily callings. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray, dear Lord, for those who are in business, who have small businesses, restaurants, all kinds of industries that are touched by this awful disease, who cannot go to work and cannot get a check need us all to come together to help them through these difficult times. People who don't know where their next nickel is coming from and where their next meal is coming from. We pray, dear Lord, the rest of us who have so much will find millions of ways 
to help our neighbors in need. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for our bishops and our pastors. Help us to continue to be a blessing to your church. We pray for Bethel Evangelical Lutheran Church, its pastor Mark, Unity Church, and its pastors Melissa and Clarence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of life, you are our resurrection. We remember those who have died and trust in, in, that in you we will live again. Breathe new life into our dry bones that we too might live forever with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God, speaking, spoken, and inspiring. Bless you, now and forever. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. What is our mission? To be faithful children of God, called by grace through Christ, and sharing this gift with Middletown, Odessa, Townsend, and the world, especially now. Amen. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks be to God. We'll get back together and worship again real soon. We pray that we'll continue to communicate in many ways as our family of Christ in Tree of Life. Amen.